did the skate park in Grand Haven, and I've also surfed with Richard on the Great Lakes one time, and it is no easy feat. When you're in fresh water, <laughs> and the waves are coming, like there's no intervals, and you've got to catch a wave to the beach. Well, Richard actually showed me how to do it. I got a little frustrated and finally just caught a few and went to the beach, and I sat on that white sand beach on the rocks and watched Richard catch a wave from like where those people are standing all the way to the mic and actually do a roundhouse cut back the whole deal on an asymmetric board. And I was just like, wow, there's still a lot for me to learn. You know, and this was just a couple of years ago. And, and that's, the reason that I mention that is because I'm still learning. Um, not so much in skateboarding. Skateboarding, I just polish my technique and that comes from my wise man Solomon, my, uh, my spiritual mentor over here. He's a very wise man. He said, you know what we do is when we get older and as professional skateboarders, we just keep polishing our technique. We refine it. It's like gold, you know? We keep getting rid of the dross and like it gets better. And that's what I do with skateboarding. But with surfing and as, as a musician too, I am constantly learning how to refine my art, but also learn and progress. And I learned that through men like this. And I learned that through not on only on a physical you know, level, and a mental wisdom kind of thing, but I learned that in a spiritual sense too. Because what it does, it brings me closer to being one with the creator and the creation that comes from being a surfer and a musician and all of that, brings me closer and tighter and gives me more peace and gives me like this, this feeling of like accomplishment that only comes from really having something bigger in my life than me. Because when I was young, it was all about me being number one and showing everybody how cool I was and how rad and how tough and you know that I was the guy look at me do you know who I am and um, you know I had a lot of ambition but the ambition for me got a little greedy you know but the, but the bottom line is that what happened was you know to get back to my little story you know is that I ended up being a 19 year old three-time world champion first brand you know, in the skateboarding industry that was really super rec recognizable and avant-garde advertising. I was on the cover and the centerfold of every freaking magazine that came along. Not to mention I got to travel all around the world and get paid to be a professional skateboarder. I mean, why me? But I think the reason why is because I was in the right place at the right time. And that's something being in the moment and learning how to be a surfer and always looking for that window of opportunity, I do it every day as a surfer. I'm looking for that little window. And that little window that, that surfing taught me, and as Jerry Lopez would say, learning how to stay in the moment is the most important thing that surfing teaches us. So the reason I bring these things up is, surfing's still number one. Skateboarding is not top on my list of priorities. <laughs> I might make money doing that, I might manufacture skateboards, and I probably had a lot to do with the evolution and the progression of the technology involved with skateboarding, but I look at it as a job, but a job that I enjoy. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, you know, it's like flipping burgers or pumping gas or, you know, whatever, changing disc pads or whatever on brakes, you know. It's not a dirty job, but it's a dangerous job. But it's something that I've learned how to basically do at a master's level. And the master's level only comes from moments like martial arts. You have to do it over and over and over again. And practice makes permanent. I'm not the perfect skateboarder, never will be, always wanted to be, but I'm not. But it's not about being perfect. And I've learned basically through the patience and the, and the, uh, the expertise that Mike has when it comes to manufacturing boards, the fact that Richard turned me on to like this whole hydrodynamic aspect of surfboards. As you can see, my surfboards are like the ones out in the museum because I took every aspect of skateboarding and surfing that I enjoyed and I did my own thing. And I didn't worry about, you know, this whole like quagmire of coolness. You know, I didn't want to get stuck in that and just try to be just the cool guy all the time. I wanted to be the happy guy. And as a kid, I strove for respect. But at this point in my life, I love my job. I love surfing. I love being a musician. I love being here and just speaking to you all about what we've done with our lives. And I want love. I'm not worried about respect. I've got the respect more than I could ever demand. And the respect that I got back in the day was because I was ready to beat it into people if they didn't respect me. And I'm not that same guy. I'm a peaceful warrior, and I bring that message to y'all. And I'm just telling you straight up that Richard Kimbin is one of the most amazing guys to even curate and do this whole project and everything. I'm grateful. Today I'm grateful for being here, for being part of this, 
and for being an integral part of the history of surfing and skateboarding. And I still want to be a professional surfer, but I think I'll just stick to being a soul surfer and it's just one day at a time. <laughs> well, thank you all very much, you guys. Um, we could, um,